Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ninky, and this is Lentil, and this is the second installment in my November haul. If you're interested in the first part, I'll include a link so you can go and check it out. I've both picked up and read a lot of manga this month, so I'm super keen to fill you guys in on how my collection is expanding. So let's get stuck into it. It's gonna be a big one, so grab a cup of tea or something sweet, and let's hang out. The first package we have is from Angus and Robertson, which is an online book retailer here in Australia. They used to have brick and mortar stores, but I think for the last few years they've mostly just been online. I'm sure you're not surprised, but I was a little unimpressed with how this package arrived. Like one of the ends of the box isn't secured properly and like just opening that end, I can already see that something looks damaged. So I'll just pull everything out and then we'll go through what I picked up. This top manga is actually Tomie by Junji Ito, which I hauled in my first video, but I got it for my cousin for Christmas because apparently he's now super into horror manga. So the first thing that we have is Maid Sama, the first of the omnibus volumes, which collects volumes one and two. This is by Hiro Fujiwara. I picked this up because it's a bit of a classic romance manga series, I think. I've seen a lot of people with this in their collection and who talk really highly about it. We then have another Junji Ito, this time a short story collection called Venus in the Blind Spot. This book feels luxe. It has this nice matte slip cover, which is also really vibrant and feels really great to hold. And you've got great art from the stories on the interiors and some color pages in the front. I've actually already read this um, just because I couldn't help myself. The stories in this were a mixed bag and the general vibe I got was like urban legends. They kind of had that feeling of campfire stories and those sorts of ghost or monster stories that you told on school trips. And the artwork is just that classic, disturbing, Lovecraftian style that Ido does so well. Basically, I'm obsessed. If you've read Venus in the Blind Spot, let me know which was your favorite story. I think the most prominent one in my mind is still the one about the armchair. Like, I just get the icks thinking about it. And then, oh gosh, look at it. We have Monster Volume 4 by Naoki Urasawa. This one got pretty banged up in the post, but bless them, Angus and Robertson have already sent out a replacement copy. I've spoken about this series in my previous videos, but I'm slowly collecting what's available. And I've heard that we're expecting Volume 5 and Volume 9 to be restocked in January, so I'm holding out for that. Then we have a haul from Kino Kunia. I feel like I'm collecting these plastic bags because I have so many of them, but I've been using them now as grocery shopping bags to try and make the most of the plastic. First up, we have Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 2. This is my first shonen, actually. I recently binge watched the anime and I was pleasantly surprised by how incredible the characterization and the world building was, so I really wanted to pick up the manga. Then we have Yona of the Dawn Volume 16. I really fell in love with the anime and I'm filling up my volumes so when I can finally get my hands on volume 9, I can pick the story back up and see what happens next. We then have Asadora volume 4 by Naoki Urasawa. I've picked up the other three volumes in the series which should appear later in the video. And then another Urasawa series. This is volume 1 of 20th Century Boys which has been out of stock forever. I still can't get volume 2, but I've heard really good things about this series and these perfect editions are really stunning and they're super hefty. This is kind of hard to summarize, but from what I know, this series is a bit like a mystery shonen and follows a group of childhood friends who, when they were little, they wanted to save the world. When they're older, there's all these disappearances and strange deaths that seem linked to this cult and one of them becomes a victim. They then realize that what's happening mirrors a story that they wrote together when they were kids. We then have Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 3. And then we have Promised Neverland Volume 9. I've been steadily picking up all of the Promised Neverland and have talked about this series in my previous videos. Rest assured, I'm still loving it and I'm still intending to collect the series in full. Next up, we have a package from Book Depository.
This is The Water Dragon's Bride Volume 1 by Ray Toma. I spoke about this series a little in my last video, but it's a shoujo that comprises of 11 volumes and follows a girl who's sucked into a pond and travels back in time where she's offered up to a water dragon god as his bride. I'm now a couple of volumes into the series and I'm really, really enjoying it. The art style is quite light and the covers make the series look quite cutesy. I will say that there are darker themes and more despair than I was actually expecting going into this. Our protagonist, Asahi, seems to sit in this middle place between the god and the humans in terms of morality. You experience the god's coldness and inhumanity, but you also experience the greed and violence of the people around her. So there's this loneliness that I didn't expect, but that I'm really interested by and is really making this a compelling read for me. Moving on, we've got a package from Amazon. We have volume five of The Demon Prince of Momochi House, another of the series that I've been slowly amassing more and more of. The covers and spines for this series are super beautiful and they look fabulous on my shelf. And what I've seen of the art style is light and airy and is a bit different from what I'm used to. Moving along, let's get into some stuff that I picked up at Kinokuniya this week. Starting with Promised Neverland Volume 6. I really enjoy the covers on this series. And I don't know about you guys, but I find that peeling the plastic wrap off of some of these volumes when you pick it up in person is super satisfying. Then we have Blood on the Tracks Volume 2 by Shuzo Ashimi. I picked up the first volume earlier in the month purely because I'm currently obsessed with and waiting to finish Oshimi's Flowers of Evil. I've been really intrigued by what I've seen about this new series online and this concept of a dangerously overprotective mother figure. Then we have The Witch and the Beast Volume 1 by Kosuke Sataki. I don't know if I said that right. I was on the fence about whether I wanted to pick this one up. I've seen it around the community, but when I was looking through it in store, I just had to get it. The art style is really cinematic and it's just stunning. It's set in a world where witches are universally powerful and our main characters work for a secret society of mages that handle problems with magic generally and witches in particular. One is a mage and the other is a girl burdened with a witch's curse who is looking for a cure and for a revenge. I picked up Another Promised Neverland, this time Volume 7. This cover is super cute. It reminds me of those Nickelodeon sleuth detective movies from like the early 2000s. I always love that they have a beautiful artwork on the inside cover of each volume as well that's totally different. This series just gives me like warm and fuzzies generally. I also picked up Volume 4 of Fruits Basket, the Collector's Edition. As I've mentioned previously, I love this series and they're difficult to get at the moment, so I'm just picking up volumes when I see them. These editions are really nice, they're hefty and the covers have that nice matte papery feel and you have these really cute colour panels in the front of each volume. I can't wait until I finally get all of them and I can actually read this series for the first time because I've only ever watched the anime. Wow, this was a big day at Kuno Kuniya. I also picked up some Yona of the Dawn volumes. This is volume 14, which has, I'm pretty sure, my favorite cover of the entire series. Although, unfortunately, the printing on this is not the best, which I should have noticed when I picked it up, but oh well. And this is volume four. I initially thought I was just gonna collect from volume nine onwards because that's where the anime, the first season of the anime ends, but I think I'll start from the beginning. And for good measure, let's do another weekend haul from Kino Kunia. Starting with Mermaid Saga volume one by Rumiko Takahashi. I've read this first volume and there's just one other in the series. They come in these beautiful editions with embossed reflective bits on the covers and French flags. Now, I'm going to have to be a little careful with the pages I show here, but I don't want you to get the wrong impression when I say that. You've got topless mermaids, but it's not fan servicey in the slightest. Our story mostly follows Yuta, who hundreds of years ago ate the flesh of a mermaid. 
Now, when a human does that, three things can happen. They can be granted eternal life, they can die shortly after, or they can turn into these grotesque monsters and become lost souls. Yuta became immortal and he's currently trying to find a way to undo his immortality. I also picked up the first two volumes of Asadora by Naoki Urasawa. This is a short series, there's just four volumes, and it all follows a skull called Asa across multiple decades, but starting in the 1950s in Japan, when she's sent out in a storm to find a doctor while her mother is giving birth, and this storm devastates her town. As you can see in these first few pages, part of the hook is that in 2020, there's this monster attack in Tokyo, and it's all connected together. I've already read this first volume, and it's just like a classic Urasawa experience. The art's incredible, it's expressive, and the storytelling really builds. Of course, it's a little slow to start as you get your bearings, but it's definitely worth sticking with. And Asa is just so cute. I think she's one of my favorite characters across all of the manga that I've read so far on this journey. I also picked up Demon Prince of Momochi House, volume six. It's a new day, and we have a delivery from Book Depository. I picked up Kami Summer Kiss Volume 1 by Julieta Suzuki. I've been waiting for this forever. I think I ordered this like at the beginning of October or like the end of September, right when lockdown in Sydney ended, but it's finally here. Uh, Kami Summer Kiss is another one of those shoujo series that I've watched the anime of and I'm really trying to collect all of the manga, which is proving difficult at the moment. And now for another Amazon package. Okay, one of these items is a novel, but we have The Promised Neverland Volume 5. Now for a Booktopia package and these boxes that I always seem to struggle to open. Well, this is me trying to figure out why it's stuck and trying not to damage the manga as I'm pulling it out. First we have Fruits Basket Volume 9 of the collector's editions with Uotani on the cover and we have Hanajima on the back. I know I've said it before but the presentation of these editions is really well done and I'll give you guys a look at the colour pages inside. And we have The Water Dragon's Bride Volume 5. This cover is really pretty. I don't love that the art inside the cover is the same as the cover art though. Like I haven't seen that too often, but I don't know, like maybe I'm just asking for too much. And one thing with this series that I would have loved is I would have loved to have seen some like more you know, color panels, just like even like a first page or something. Okay, so I went to Kino Kunia again this weekend. I was in the city doing some early Christmas shopping and like, you know, it would be rude not to. We'll see how long Lentil wants to sit with us, but let's see what I grabbed. You're probably not surprised, but volume 10 of The Promised Neverland. Well, looks like we got Lentil's attention. <laughs> This is one of my favorite covers, I think. I think it just looks fab. 
Next up is volume two of Mao by Rumiko Takahashi. This is her new series and this volume just came out. I've been contemplating buying it online and I just picked it up on a whim today. I spoke about the series in my first video, but just at a high level, follows a girl who travels back in time and encounters an exorcist and it's about her adventures with him. Then we have The Walking Cat, a cat's eye view of the zombie apocalypse by Tomo Kitauka. I hope I pronounced that correctly. This is a single omnibus which has all three volumes. I think this is Kitauka's first manga series published in English, correct me if I'm wrong. I've already read this and I'm thinking of doing like a short review video with my thoughts because I haven't seen too many people talking about this manga. At a high level, I did really enjoy it. It's violent and emotional and the art is really, really well done. It's super expressive. I also picked up Mujirushi, The Sign of Dreams by Naoki Urasawa, which is also a single volume. You can probably tell I am obsessed with Urasawa at the moment, and the premise of this is totally my thing. You can see on the cover the girl is standing in front of the Louvre Museum in Paris. This is another Urasawa mystery that's twisty-turvy and revolves around the art world. And just like all of the Viz signature editions they've done for Urasawa's work, this manga is beautiful. It's got the flaps, the transparent first page, the heft, and it's got a really nice texture to the cover. Okay, new day and another Booktopia delivery. This looks like a box that I am going to struggle to open, so bear with me. You guys can see what I've picked up, but let's get into it. These books are filthy, but we've got volume seven of Monster by Naoki Urasawa. I've just started the series and I'm just finding his writing so immersive and addictive and creative. And I'm just, I'm really loving being taken on a journey by him. I also picked up volume six. The thing that I'm liking about Monster so far, and I'm trying to reserve my judgment or like conceptual thinking on it until I finish it, is that it's sort of this almost karma-based story that's subverted. Like, what happens when you're trying to do the right thing and your actions then facilitate a greater evil? Like, are you responsible for that? Should you feel guilt for that? We then have volume six and seven of The Water Dragon's Bride, again with really soft, beautiful cover art. And you've got Asahi on one and the dragon god on the other. One thing I am actually really enjoying with this, I think it's a bit tropey, but you know, you've got that kind of emotionless, supernatural character that's unlearning that, or rather learning emotion and learning connection. Um, I think that's something that Toma has done really, really well in this series. And then we have Blood on the Tracks Volume 3. These covers are really beautifully done as well, actually. I really like that a lot of them kind of feel like a collage of family photos and, and childhood drawings and that sort of thing. And we have another package from Book Depository. I told you guys that I got a lot of manga this month. I won't dwell on this one too long, but this is my replacement copy of Volume 1 of The Demon Prince of Momochi House. In my last video, I received a pretty banged up copy, which Book Depository, bless them, replaced for free. Let's move along to a final Booktopia package. This feels pretty light, so I think it's just got a single volume in it. And we have volume 13 of Yona of the Dawn to round out this haul for the month. It's not my favorite cover, but I love the back, it's so cute. Yeah. 
So that's it for my November haul. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I'm really excited about so many of the things that I picked up this month, but I'd also really love to know what you're excited about at the moment. Whether it's something that you're wanting to get, something that's coming out, or something that you just got your hands on, let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed my video, it'd mean the world if you gave it a like and considered subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.